Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're in the FA18C, it's mid-December 2019. We're in early access of the targeting pod, so that's what we're going to look at. It's the Lightning 2 targeting pod, and we can have it on our center pylon only. In addition for this video, we're going to take a couple of GBU-38s. We're not going to be doing weapons in this video, but it's just to help show the target designation off. We're armed up now. As standard, the power knob for the flirt is on standby, and we can turn that on if we want. On the ground here, flirt appears there, and we can turn that on. It's currently warming up. It will become obvious when it's fully warmed up because the picture will appear. We can actually go and take off now if we want while that's warming up, and it should be warmed up by the time we're airborne. Okay, that's it. It's ready to go. It took about two minutes until it was warmed up. Next, in our example, we can go master arm on, we can go air to ground, and we can select our JDAMs just for this example. As well as that, if we wanted to use the laser designator, we could arm that now that we've got air to ground selected and we're warmed up. There we go. And if we wanted to use our laser spot track, we would arm that there. Let's go and find a target. So we have targets on the nose. Let's ever so quickly set the bombs up just so that we can show them off. And now let's look at today's controls. To slew the sensor, we have TDC up, down, left, and right, of course. To designate a target, we have TDC depress. To undesignate a target, we have undesignate nozzle steering switch. To assign the TDC to the right MFD, in this case, we will, of course, have SCS right. And then once it's assigned, then SCS right will toggle between different track modes. In this case, area track and point track or no track press of the trigger will toggle the laser on or off or the marker on or off raid fov button here if you press it short i.e less than uh, i think 800 milliseconds it will toggle between narrow and wild field of view and if you hold it for more than 800 milliseconds i.e a long press it will cycle between tv or ccd or ir sensor Cage, uncaged button will recage the sensor to its ball sighted position or its cage position. Radar elevation control up and down will allow us to zoom in and out. Or if you don't want to use these hotel commands, you can use the OSBs around the screen, which we will use. So first thing to do is to ensure that the TDC is assigned to this screen. So SCS right. You can see the diamond there. We're now ready to go. Zero degrees left. This is our azimuth relative to bore site. So we're currently zero degrees. So if we slew left, that would be minus X degrees left and minus X degrees right relative to bore site. And the same here in terms of vertical, minus 10 degrees up and so on. The standard position, if we were to press cage or uncage button, would recage to zero azimuth minus five pitch. Zoom, we can zoom in and out between zero and nine. Here we can see that we are operational. Here is a field of view between wide and narrow. And when in wide, these brackets here show the extent of the narrow field of view. We currently have our laser armed because we press the laser arm switch to the arm position. We have the option to mark here and we will come back to that in a bit. Trigger, we will come back to in a bit. RTCL currently has no function. UFC allows us to change our two laser codes, our PRFs. So we press that here, we can change the laser code either for our laser designator or our laser spot track. And to do one of them, we would press the equivalent one, whatever what we wanted to put in, enter, and that's changed that to six, back to 1688. The current laser designator code is shown there, and the current laser spot search or laser spot track code is shown there. We have shown here our barometric altitude, our speed not CAS, our speed in MAC, and we can declutter them with the declutter button. I don't know why you'd ever want to do that, but you can. If you press this button here, you initiate the LSS, the laser spot search. We've got a full video on that. We're not going to go through that, but that's how you would do that. It's currently in CCD. This is like an optical TV mode. If we wanted to change that, we would use the blur, the infrared. At the moment, we have not much different functionality. We have an autofocus, which doesn't work at the moment. You can see it's out of focus. Autofocus will focus in when that's working properly. We have a white or black hot polarity. With black hot, the hot things show as black and white hot vice versa. Next, let's go and show how to track a target so we're going to go to narrow field of view you can see you've got some different vehicles around here let's say i just wanted to designate some space between these vehicles here i would just press tdc depress and when i do that if we look at the screen here i've got the weapon set up to receive those coordinates and it's received those coordinates in h digit lat long and the elevation above sea level that's how i would designate for instance a jdam 
here you can see that from that my natural track is an a track that is an area track we can have an area track or a point track an area track simply tracks a point on the terrain where this cursor is pointing a point track will track an actual contrastable visible object whether that be a small building or a vehicle or whatnot an area track can only be a static target a point track can be a moving target so let's go and try out a point track if we move over here we press scs right we now have a point track on that vehicle and we can tell because it's point track and we have the box around it there now the real use of a point track is that it will follow a moving target so i'm gonna turn that back to an area track by pressing scs right i'm gonna go and find this moving guy this may not or may not work with the optical sensor let's give it a go so point track you can see it's not working and that's probably because I'm uh, using CCD. So I'm going to switch to IR. We can get a better contrast. It's going to get a better chance of working. So point track there. Missed it. Try again. Okay, I've got him. So, man, I've lost him. I'll try to get him here. So area track. Got to a point track. Got him, finally. So I've now converted to a point track. And that will follow him. Let's see if I can follow him even when he's moving fast. <laughs> Loses it when he's going fast. SES right to revert back to area track now that show marking and lasing a target so let's go and find this guy up here we'll get a point track just because we can our laser is already armed and ready to go we know we've got the laser selected because we've got l arm if we want to use it now we press trigger and we actually now press the trigger on the hotas and it's ltdr that means it's now lasing so a laser of prf1688 is now going on that vehicle press it again and it cancels and then we can go and while we're lasing we can drop a gbu or someone else can go and drop a gbu or a laser guided maverick or whatever if we wanted to mark this is for night operations this fires a non-designating marking laser it's a visible laser with night vision goggles at night time automatically trigger is selected marker is armed press the trigger again and we are now marking and we can turn that off if we want so they can't guide a weapon to a marker but you can visually guide a guy with night vision goggles to see a target with a marker and we use it in missions so the only other thing i want to show is how we can slave our t-pod position to a current waypoint now it, it hasn't actually been implemented at this point but we do have a workaround so we're going to first of all go to our sa page here and this is a really useful feature we're going to select waypoint one which is right there we're going to zoom in a bit that's waypoint one and if we want to slave our t-pod to the waypoint the best thing that we can do at the moment is ensure this is tdc assigned which it is and we can actually move and see where our t-pod point see where our t-pod is targeting on the sa page and we can move it over to waypoint one like that it seems a bit clunky but it is actually a really cool thing to do and that is now over waypoint one and the use of that is if there was for instance an sa6 out here it would show on our sa page and we could then use this feature here to go and find that sa6 and it would put your t-pod pretty much on top of that sa6 so it's a really cool feature that you can use so that's all i want to show on the t-pod in early access we've showed how to laze how to mark how to designate a target how to track an area track a point track and how to snap as best we can to a waypoint of area interest through the SA page. I hope that was useful and see you later.